going on guys, Victor here. Today we are out with Captain Tanner of Real Deal Fish and Charters out of the West Coast. How's it going guys? So uh, what's on the menu today, Tanner? We're gonna run out probably around 45, 50 miles and start catching some mangroves around the bottom. And then uh, hopefully that goes well. Then this afternoon we'll probably switch up and get over some structure and get a free line for some yellowtail, possibly mangroves too, and then hopefully in the day with some permit on there too. Should be a good day, we're gonna have flat calm seas. And every great fishing day starts with not only jigs, but live bait. So Tanner is just kind of working this area right here. He's got marked and we're gonna go after some pilchards right now. He's gonna bust out the cast net. So we just ran a little bit more down the beach and you can actually see them on top right here. Skipping, you guys see that little nervous water? That's all bait. There's some in there. Beautiful. All right, hopefully that's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad pull, Tanner. That should be enough for the day. Nice. Okay, so bait mission complete. We'll see you guys offshore. Vic is cheating over here. It's not cheating. We're 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 going back to what we used to do back in the day before the jigs. Okay, so Tanner says that there's a lot of big mangroves down there and I got a little pilcher that you guys saw him net earlier. 5-0 Mustad Demon Perfect Circle. We Joey's got... already hooked up in the front of the boat. Jeez Louise, all right, this spot's good. Um, 30 pound tough line floral, dropping down. Now he says that the grouper react much better to the jig than the mangroves and I've been seeing this guy post tons of slob mangroves on his story so I'm trying to get that mangrove action. I hope these boys prove me wrong with the jig. So we got three jiggers, one live bait guy. One camera woman. I mean, come on, this is absolutely beautiful out here today. These are very rare nowadays, these kinds of flat calm days. So Joey just caught himself a red grouper up there. How's it going? I'm Joey and uh somehow i went walking and ended up with these guys i don't know where i'm at i just woke up and i'm here it's a pretty nice walk oh, oh my oh, god oh, that god. hit was so Stop. ferocious okay here we go here we go as joey was making his youtube debut this is kind of feeling more snappery than it is groupery to me but what do i know so that is a mangrove that is a mangrove, a mangrove. So yeah, day. buddy. So not a, a super big one, but I mean, this is an above average size mangrove. Perfect eater size, probably like 14 inches, I'd say. Much bigger than the 10 inch minimum that you have to keep. But these guys, where there's one, these are big schooling fish, so there should be a whole mess of them down there. That circle hook, perfectly in the corner of the mouth. Some good fresh pilchards. And I like to hook them right here. I actually like to go from the bottom jaw up here and your hook tends to not double back as much as if you hook them in the nostril. You guys see it's super clear today, so to get those bites, I'm fishing 30 pound tough line fluorocarbon. I feel like the fish is on. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yep, 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 yep. yep. No! That was a good fish right there. I feel like he was in some type of structure. Take it. This is definitely a, a mangrove snapper. You can tell those those red grouper really bulldog you on the very first like 10 feet. Mangroves is kind of just like super aggressive jaw shakes. They like bite the hook over and over again. Hey, I'd be happy catching these size guys all day long. Signature line right here. That's how you can always tell it's a mangrove snapper. Double header. Vic's got a better one. Good fish. Let's go. I think it's gonna be a grouper though. Yep. Surprise. Well, I got my first fish of the trip. Well, no, I guess second because I caught that grouper earlier. But my first keeper in the boat. Nice little mangrove snapper. Super, super big clean mangrove. fish. Vic, what do you got? Big oh, mangrove. you got big daddy. Big mangrove. You know it's a good one when you think it's going to be a wow. grouper. Oh! oh! 
you. Yeah. Well, way to make my fish look extra small, dude. It's not the first time, won't be the last, Ron. Alrighty. Oh. Well, I am just gonna be nice to you because I don't have anything good to say. Listen, he's <laughs> usually the sarcastic one, so I gotta get him in when I can. All right, guys. So check that out. You versus the guy <laughs> she tells you not to worry about. There you go. There's the Ryan I know. There's probably a ton of mangrove snappers down there that size, but there's a lot more of those smaller, like 14 inch fish. This fish is probably 21, 22 inches, just solid mangrove snapper. Check out these fangs right here. They'll use these two fangs up here. They'll crush that pilchard and then they'll swim away with it and just kind of orientate it. So it way, that way they can swallow it head first. You got a screen oh, on it. Joey. Nice. Nice. Wait, bait or jig? Bait. No, he's got a pilchard on there. Dude, that's a good fish. And we went real light on this one, so we gotta take careful this line. It didn't take long to get all the jigs off. Why nope. did it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's an AJ, do you? No, no I'm just. It could be a I catch a too. lot of AJs on this rod. <laughs> wow. This is lucky day. He's got two more weeks. They'd be going on ice. Great. Damn it. Dang, nice Joey. That's a good so fish for my... you to do. Yeah. That is a good gag. Look at that. <laughs> that would be a keeper too. Dang it, dude. Oh, that's a nice gag. <laughs> oh. What'd you say? It was out of season by two weeks? Two weeks. So June 1st <laughs> is the opening of gags, and this one would have been going home with us. Two days away from opening day gags. That's my first gag ever. Wide open. Really? Yeah. This is my first gag ever. Yeah, dude. That's crazy. Gags open on our Man. coast, west coast, June dude. 1st. So okay. we got to let him go. We're a couple days earlier. Yeah, go ahead and dump them. But it seems like when you, as soon as you get in the opening season, those things disappear and they're hard to come by. There's actually three YouTubers on the boat today. You got me, you got Birkenstein, and you got Ryan. YouTuber is a strong word, but no. Yes, I, I guess I do create YouTube videos. <laughs> what do we prefer to be called? Um, Better than Ryan influencer. Maury. Influencer is a, not Content a good word. Content creator? Content creator. That's a good one. It's, all, it's weird. Making videos for the internet is just a weird thing in general, but it's fun to do. Tim is tight on ice fish. But anyways, I was trying to give these guys some love. As you guys see, <laughs> we work as a big family unit here. I film Ryan, Ryan films me, Brooke, we all just kind of film each other. Brooke I'll help each other out. Ones. Brooke does film everyone majority of the time. She's she's the best, that's why I love her. But you guys check out Brookie's channel, linked below. It's Brooke Christ Outdoors. Thank you. And check out Ryan's channel, linked below as well. I'd love to have you guys. So very interesting on his fins. You got the little black dots. I've never really seen it before. You got it on the tail, you got it on the anal fin, and you got it on the peck fins here. They're so cool how they have such different color patterns from fish to fish. Yep. Some are brighter red, some are more gray. I'm actually very curious to know what those black spots are. So if you guys know, comment down below. Maybe we got some science people in the house. You guys can educate me. On oh, the head shakes. Jack Something like that. Blue runner. Are you sure? Yep, 100%. <laughs> Spot on him 40 feet down, son. Hey, man. Eyes like a hawk. It's full grown right there. That guy's traveled the seven seas right there. <laughs> He's pretty healthy. Big Real good fish. I haven't turned him at all. Big fish, guys. Big fish. I haven't been able to turn him off the bottom yet. Oh, no. What the snapper? Get him over here. <laughs> Oh, look, oh look, look, my look. God! Bro, go back, 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 back! That's a giant kudu. Look, this kudu just absolutely smoked my mangrove. Okay, keep him distracted because I got another one coming. Yeah, well, he's distracted by a little something, something over here. Yeah. Nice. Paying attention. Wow. You didn't work. Just barely got this mangrove snapper back. That kudu grabbed him. Crazy! Look at that. Well, we still got dinner. Big mangrove, big mangrove. Oh yeah, look at that one. Dude, it's a stud! Bring him in, Vic. Nice one. Stud mangrove. Dude. Oh my. Guys, look at the size of this mangrove snapper right there. I think it's Let's a little see. bigger than mine. Oh! Let's say just a little bit. Yours got attacked by a cuda, didn't it? Mine got mauled by a big toothy critter, but man. Come out with Captain Tanner if you want to catch some delicious mangrove snapper. Some this studs. is so much fun. All I've been fishing today is this 5-0 Mustard Demon Circle, 30 pound tough line, and all of the tackle you guys see me using today, I'm gonna to have it linked below. You guys can actually save 20% off 
all Mustad and Toughline products linked below. Hold them sideways, that's a stud, Vic. That is a monster. Dude, that hook was not going anywhere. Look, he's only got one top fang. fang. Yeah, I wonder if the hook messed him up. 23, just right around 23. That's a good size hook. 23 inches. Come on. Let's get him. Come on, Maury. Beat him. Beat him, Maury. Oh my god, real seat's coming undone. Give him the pepper with that salty gun, that focus. Uh oh, what is this? Oh, yeah. Don't fall in that. Oh god. Goliath one? grouper. <laughs> really? Dude, you guys see that Goliath? Look at yeah. <laughs> what is that? Oh my oh god. Two of them, three of them. Oh, yeah. buddy. Look at them all down there. Woo! Yeah, good job. We got absolutely dominated by these fish last time. <laughs> so I was fishing pretty tight drag and I already straightened that hook a little bit. We were hooking some true monsters last time. I'm gonna let this uh, fun size one go. Hopefully catch a bigger one. He's got it. He's on, boy. You better real, Luby. He's going for the wreck. <laughs> Other Goliaths are sitting down there too. Yeah, those Goliaths came up on mine. Three of them, not just one, three. There is a Goliath on him, isn't there? Look, look, look. Yeah, there is. Yep. Uh, I think yep. it's another AJ. Is it? Yeah, it looked like one though. Yeah, it's a bigger Holy AJ. smokes, it's a big AJ. Well, show me the money. That's a get you hurt AJ. There's, there's Goliaths there's right Goliath there. Two there Goliaths too. right That's there. That's a Cobia with it. Let your bait go. No, I'm sorry. I just shouldn't have said that. It was so dark on top. <laughs> that was so dark on there's top. There's a Goliath right there. You got your heart going for like a And he turned, I'm like, I'm going to All right. Circle hook did exactly what it had to do. You're We're not going to keep this guy because we got plenty of snapper in the boat. But look at that. I think at one point something tried to get him. Old. Yeah, that is old, isn't it? Just brute strength on these guys. Oh, 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 That's good, man. Speaks to their intelligence. Wow. Look at the Goliath. Look at the Goliath. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, oh, my gosh. gosh. Wow. Whee! Oh, oh, too yeah. much of a splash, I'm sorry. All right guys, so we just switched spots. Now we're after one of my favorite fish in the ocean, the permit. So, permit are big crustacean eaters. One of the best ways to get them is with a little blue crab, pass crab, got a little 3 -0 mustad circle hook right here. And permit, when they're on wrecks and offshore like this, they got one goal in mind and that's to spawn. So they'll congregate in really big groups on these near shore wrecks, 60 feet of water, 100 feet of water, and it pre presents a really good opportunity for us fishermen to get after them. So Tanner's been seeing them at this wreck the last few times he's been here, but they kind of move around. You don't know if they're gonna be on the north side of it, the south side of it, so we're kind of just all really looking to see if we see them, because they'll be really suspended up in the water column. Toss your crab in there and hold on for dear life, because they are probably one of the hardest fighting fish in the ocean. All right, Vic, remember those uh, Goliaths are down there. Yep, yeah. he's already going down, dude. Tim, I don't know where you are. I'm First way above you. you, don't worry. All right, guys. I'm watching my line. Finally got a permit bite. I've just left my crab drift out there. We've seen about 10 of them come by the boat. Everyone's been messing around with the amberjacks. And <laughs> Ryan's been messing around with the amberjacks. Finally got a permit to eat. That's good if he runs that way, Rex to your left. Okay. Not good that he went down though. Nope. So there's a bunch of Goliath grouper we've been seeing come up and trying to attack Ryan's amberjacks. Oh boy, buddy, stay up. Stay up. <laughs> that fish went straight down. So Tanner says there's a wreck right here where we're anchored by. Ooh, I need to keep him out of there. You're good on that side. Come on, buddy. He just got that magic. I've been soaking a crab. I've been soaking a crab, man. He's got that Slovakian touch. He's got that first AP. 
Who had a bait in the water on that first AP? Me. You know, I've Ooh. never caught a permit offshore before. Yeah. Nope. You have. You have. I didn't. Then I earned it because we have been so oh, for the yep. Stuff. yep. So sick. Dude, these. Oh no, the Goliath is right there. You guys see him? A lot of it. Come on. Permit, don't go down. <laughs> I see the Goliath. Dude, that is. Oh boy, there's two of them chasing him now. Okay, he's going this way. Huh? Oh yeah, he's freaked out. He sees all those Goliaths down there trying to eat him. Come back up. For those in the comments, what rod is that? On the Ocean's Legacy Focal. Love this rod. Oh man. Oh. Yes. Yeah, he saw those Goliaths and he's like, I think I'd rather come to the boat now. You know, I actually felt this permit munch the crap. Like a snapper did. Isn't that sick? Dude, yeah. it's the same thing on the blast. You feel them like pop up, pop up. Yep. As they're crushing it. All right, we'll pass the Goliaths. It's like a giant silver saucer down there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Nothing puts out as big of a flash besides an African pompano. Dude, they are hard fighting fish, man. Oh, oh. Nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Way harder fighting than over here. Let's go about that. Put them on a toothpick. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Tanner. Woo. There you go. Oh, yes, Thank sir. You. Good got job, it. Yep, man. I got it. There you go. Captain Fire. Tanner got us on the mangroves in the morning. Now, stud permit on the wrecks. Slick, calm weather, absolutely beautiful out here. Right Catching there. stud fish. And look at this. That mustad circle hooked it exactly what it was supposed to. 3 0 demon in the old rubber lips. Get a load of those. See how soft and squishy those lips are? They actually have a crusher back there in their throat, what they'll use to eat baby lobster and all sorts of different crab species and all sorts of different crustaceans. Just a stud. Beautiful permit. Good job. Thank you, babe. <laughs> oh! There's no, there's no chance, dude. There's no chance. Dude. Drop it back. Look at that, AJ. <laughs> oh my. Dude, look, look at that. It. Dude, look at the whole wreck come alive. Oh my god. You just handled the top ten. <laughs> you better get on it, buddy. Well, just, just throw the sacrificial one back in. Oh jeez. Hey, you want to catch an AJ, Ryan? Look at the one that just went after that, that yellowtail. Massive. Oh, he's, oh, dude. he's 50 he pounder. that yellow tail. He was a unit. Victor. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good job, dude, dude. You can get your yellow tail past all the predators down there. These are some stud yellow tails during the middle of the day. Look at this. Monster yellow tails. <laughs> we got giant barracudas down there. Amberjacks that are like 50 pounds trying to eat these things. Goliath grouper all at once, like in formation, trying to eat your yellowtail. Unreal. So Tanner has um, a chum slick going, and these yellowtails are back there in the chum slick. He's shake, shaking the chum bag, just like you guys see us do back at home out of Hillsboro, flatlining a little jig head. And yeah, nice yellowtail in the boat. Oh no, the Goliath! Come on, come on! Swim! Oh, he didn't even eat it. He, no, he got it. Swim away. They won't even touch what? it when it's not even hooked. Uh, uh, swim away perfectly fine. So I just pulled the hook on and the yellowtail got to save his life. But look, we got one, two, three goliaths. Okay, we got one. Look, here we go. Huge kudos. Go. Let's see if Joey can get his fish in. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> too much power. Oh no, I ripped he it right off. the goliath. Hey, there's actually no predators. Yeah, there's a predator. Oh! Come on, come on, come on! Oh. We get one up here clean. Hey, we did it! That's a good one. Careful. That is a good one. Alright. For our coast, <laughs> like when we go nighttime yellowtailing, this would be a really, really nice fish. Like you might get one. You might get one this size every night. Most of them are like 12 to 14 inches, but these are all stud yellowtail snapper for the middle of the day too. 
You guys know we always talk about a lot of current being important with snapper fishing. There is no current out here right now, which makes it super tough because your bait just sinks down so you don't get a good presentation. You want that scent, you want your chum, you want your hook, you want your bait to all flow in a nice even line behind the boat. And it just makes everything a little bit more difficult, but Canner's still putting us on the studs. Check this out, guys. We just went up to a new spot. Look at all the life in the water. This is one of the most just visually appealing things for a fisherman. Check this out. Let's see it, Joey. He's gonna toss out a jig there with no hook. Jig. Watch what happens. Oh my, was that him knocking it out yeah, of the water? Yeah. There's just hundreds of these jacks right here. Dude, incredible. So these fish just fire each other up. One sees another one doing something and then you get a hundred pile on to each other. You could not fish a bait here without catching one of these guys. So primary target, we're still trying to get permit. I've caught one. I really want Bricky to get one. So we're kind of just waiting because if we put our crab in the water, chances are these ages are going to eat it. So you kind of want to sight fish them and just wait for them to just flow by. All right guys, successful day offshore. Check this out. Now that is a good looking deck right there. All thanks to this guy right here, Captain Tanner. Thank you for putting us on him, dude. Thank you, man. Pleasure taking you guys out today. So we got a bunch of big mangroves, yellowtail snapper, permit, and it might look like a lot of fish, but the Gulf of Mexico's fishery is really well regulated. And this is like an average day for them. This is not a slaughter by any means. You know, we got five guys on the boat, so all of us are going home with fish. All of us got families to feed, so. You feed me, bro? I, Do I you didn't consider say me that. family? I didn't say that. You don't consider me family? You're family, but I didn't say I'm feeding you. Ugh, unfortunate. You're expensive to feed, you know that? You know, I'm not a cheap date, but it's okay. You keep me around, so you must like me or something. Something like that. After, As you say, after 10 years, it's hard to get rid of you. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck now. But I will catch you guys back at the dock. And like I said, book a trip like this with Captain Tanner. Last time we fished with him, we got on, we limited out on grouper, on red grouper and caught some stud African pompano. So, catch you guys back at home. So check this out. This is the biggest mangrove of the day. I'm gonna fill it up with the new deck stream. This is a really cool knife because it's got a dual edge. So you have your precision side right here, and then you have a serrated side right there, which makes it perfect for scaly fish like snapper and sheep's head. This is the beauty of this knife. So, mangrove snapper got thick scales, right? And I know a lot of people struggle with getting through those scales. Well, this side makes it a breeze to get through that and it saves this side of your blade from getting dull as well. So now I can continue my fillet. You see that serrated edge gets right through those scales. Knock them off and now I can flip it and use this side to do my standard fillet. of just separating the flesh from the bone. Okay, I'm gonna break through the pin bones right here. Over this rib cage, down on the other side of the backbone. Just like that. Mangrove snapper, side number one. Right through those scales, through those scales once again. I already know this knife is gonna be very useful when it comes to big mine snapper and big red snapper. Those things got some gnarly scales. Break through the pin bones with our mangrove over the rib cage. like that mangrove side number two I love looking at a fish carcass after it's done being filleted you can also use this knife to skin only thing word of caution 
Remember, you do have a blade on this side, so just keep those fingers away. Wham! And if you guys are interested in this knife, you can find it linked below. This is the seven inch, like I said, they come in a bunch of different sizes. On all the other Dexter blades, you guys can save 20% off. These unfortunately are not discounted right now because they are a new item. If they do become discounted in the future, I'll let you guys know, but you guys can use my code LANDSHARK to save 20% off all the other stuff on the website, dexteroutdoors.com. Let's whip these up for dinner. I'll catch you guys there. All right guys, so we're gonna bake up our mangrove snap right here. I actually have them brushed with olive oil on both sides. This is one of our favorites right here. Some branch and vine, Meyer lemon infused olive oil. And I've already seasoned the other side as well. The branch and vine, Meyer lemon, I'm gonna have that linked below for you guys. And we're gonna use their balsamic vinegar in a little bit as well. So I just hit it with a little coriander. And then since we got some not so spicy people here, we'll do half of them with some crushed red pepper, half without, how about that? And of course, you gotta hit it with salt and pepper. Okay, so we're gonna go in 400 degrees with the mangrove snapper, right there. And then a little bit earlier, I just got a whole pack of bacon, cooked it down, and I reserved all the bacon fat. So this is gonna go in with our balsamic Swiss chard. Instead of sauteing our vegetables in just vegetable oil or olive oil, I'm not gonna waste the good fat, so. This is actually the roots of the Swiss chard. Um, they're a lot firmer than leaves. You got a little onion, celery, carrot, and we're just gonna saute this. So these are the leaves of the Swiss chard. I got a stock pot right here. And just a little bit of oil. And we're gonna wilt these down. These don't take very long to cook at all. I actually have a little, I added some Japanese sweet potato. So we got a little sauteed veggies in our bacon fat. Uh, it's just a super savory dish, and I also added some brown sugar to kind of caramelize all those vegetables. This stuff right here, earlier we used a little branch and vine Meyer lemon. They also make a lot of infused vinegar, so this is a balsamic vinegar. We're going to go in with this stuff right here. It's going to be real simple. It's going to be balsamic, Swiss chard, bacon, tomato. So this is, see all that Swiss chard ended up being wilted down to this. It's very comparable to something like spinach. And then I threw in a little grape tomatoes in there as well. And then we're gonna add our bacon in now so it stays nice and crisp. A little of that Japanese sweet potato with those sauteed veggies. Okay, so this is the mangrove snapper, all final. Um, earlier in the video, you guys heard me say that I compared it to more like a mutton, in between a mutton and yellowtail. Definitely more on the side of the yellowtail snapper. I wanted to just kind of freshen up on a final note. We just got a little microgreens, some rice vinegar, sugar, lemon zest, coriander, and I'm just gonna take a pile of these microgreens right here and just kind of toss them in it. And I'm doing it at the very end, so they're not gonna be soggy. Gorgeous. All right, so from the bottom up, we got our Japanese sweet potato with our Swiss chard roots, a little onion, celery, carrot, and then we got our Swiss chard balsamic style with a little bacon and grape tomato finished off with our broiled mangrove snapper. And then we got some microgreens, tossed in a little vinegar, sugar, lemon zest, coriander, tossed right on top. All right, so I've never had Japanese sweet potato before, but it is absolutely delicious. It was really funny because when Victor was prepping everything, I was in the room and I hear him go, are you kidding me? <laughs> he thought that it was gonna be purple because he's bought purple sweet potatoes before. And he started peeling them and realized that they weren't purple, but they were absolutely delicious and everything mixed just went together so perfectly. All the different flavors meshed so well. So good job, Vic, it was very delicious. Thanks, Birkenstein. Yeah, it was good. So I'm gonna keep eating if that's okay. That's good. <laughs> As she keeps eating, what the best thing I like about it is the fish is awesome. 
The mango snapper is cooked perfect and everything else is awesome. And I like the bacon on it as well. Thank wow. you, Brooke and Vic. You know what? That's an awesome comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna really watch this video and like it. <laughs> so I love the way that Vic prepared the fish tonight. Uh, it's not often you get fish that's baked and then broiled. Uh, it's not a preparation you see quite often, but the snapper really lends itself to that. I really love the touch of the bacon with the Swiss chard. Really gives it a nice kind of smoky flavor, if you will, which you know is not often you have in a salad. But whatever he made underneath, it's it looks like a mirepoix, but it tastes almost like a salad, like a like a Thanksgiving dressing, if you will. But the celery really gives it a nice touch. The root vegetables really add to the dish. Awesome, dude. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was good. I think that was. I think that was the best food review that Victor and I have ever gotten before, so that was really good. <laughs> it's always funny when you have new people come over, everyone's always so nervous about this part of the video, and it's like, don't be nervous, literally say whatever you want, and he absolutely killed it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I always tell you guys that the mangrove snapper was not my favorite tonight, and I think it's because I left a little too much bloodline, maybe on my piece, everyone else liked theirs, but if you guys look right here, I always tell you guys about that bloodline. You see how dark that is right there? That gives it a real fishy flavor. Still really good, I mean, we all ate our fish, but um, all these sides right here, I highly recommend you try because we really liked it. Um, big, big shout out to Captain Tanner. We work with so many captains, you guys see, traveling East Coast, West Coast, and a lot of these videos are not possible without them. If we want to you know, show you guys all these different fisheries, people like Captain Tanner make it possible. So if you guys want to book a trip with him, African Pompano, Snapper, Grouper, all different kinds of stuff. Jigging, live baiting as you guys saw in this one. I'm gonna have his information linked below. We gotta give appreciation to where it's due. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.